you find it's our best book club surprise yet. <laughs> Plus, we reveal the new book we'll all be reading this month. Then, <laughs> our refined Whistler adventure dives into a spectacular spa experience. Plus, that's probably the best fish and chips that I've ever had. We flag down a food truck whose fish and chips are becoming legendary. And it's so dreamy. I just want to eat it with my eyes closed. <laughs> we eat our way through Seattle's International District, one hidden gem at a time. Seattle Refined starts now. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Seattle Refined. I'm Gard Swanson. There is nothing that compares to being swept away by a great book. You know what I'm talking about, the kind of read that inspires you, challenges you, and makes you look at the world just a little bit differently. Our February Refined Book Club pick was all that and more. In fact, many readers tell us it's their favorite book club pick yet. It's called This Is How It Always Is by Seattle author Lori Frankel. And it is a powerful and touching story of a family whose fairy tale life becomes complicated when their son decides he wants to live his life as a girl. We held our monthly book club soiree in one of the beautiful showrooms at Room and Board in University Village. It was the perfect place to pour some wine, get cozy, and start unpacking this powerful story. General, kind of before we dig too deep into specific topics, general, did you like it, hate it, love it? Loved it. Loved it. Loved, Loved it. it. I finished yeah. it in a weekend. There were chores that did not get done. <laughs> so I could get this book finished. I yeah. know, but I think I finished, I think I started at like 8 p.m. one night and I literally had like went into like 3 a.m. Just like I couldn't, I just couldn't put it down. You know, one of the books I, I just kind of printed out, they have this reading guide. I don't know if you guys all looked at it. There was at the back of the book, but there's this reading guide and one of the one of the questions they asked was, did this book change your view of gender and identity? Yeah, I've had some exposures that people yeah. That were going through that, but they were always older. Yeah. To have a child go through that was opened my eyes to what was going on and the things you have to go through in school yeah. and the other parents that don't understand. A few minutes into the discussion, a very special guest arrived to join the group. Hi, we have a straggler. Hi. Come on in, come on in, scoot on over. Oh, thank cool. you. Yeah. So yeah. we just, sorry, really quickly, we'll just kind of, we just uh, went around and introduced ourselves and kind of said why we're here. So you want to introduce yourself and say why you're here? Yeah, I'm Laurie Frankel. I wrote that book. Oh! Whoa. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Yay. <laughs> the author drew a lot of her inspiration for the book from her own life and that of her transgender child. So you, you talk a little bit about in the author's note. Can you elaborate a little bit more on how much of this book is is your life and how much of this book is that pot of what an author does when they put in a little bit of real life? Right. Of, yeah, I love that. That was a great okay. way to explain it. Yeah, and that's what it is. It's, yeah. it's a pot. Um, it's true that I have a daughter who, who used to be a boy, and otherwise it's completely made up. Yeah. <laughs> and, th and that's because we are very blessed to have a very boring life, frankly. And it would have been a, if it had been a memoir, it would have been, it would have been short and tiresome, um, which is great. I mean, yeah. it's yeah. what you want out of your life is to be plot free. It's yeah. just not what you want out of your novel. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about how you incorporated Seattle into, into the book. I mean, that was where this family went for refuge. Yeah, yeah. You know, the Seattle part is the easy part to make up, actually. It's funny, because I know how much I can fudge it. Yeah. So, so I have these months where I'm like, well, you can't really see that from there. Yeah, yeah, but I yeah, feel yeah, fine yeah. about fudging yeah. it, as opposed to the Thailand part, where I actually yeah. flew to Thailand in order to write it. One of my burning questions would be, did you, did you have an intention going into writing this book? Well, I wanted to tell this story, and I think that the spin on transgender kids at the moment is not entirely truthful or accurate. So I wanted to offer something that was more truthful and accurate and frankly not scary. Because um, these kids are lots of things, but that you know, they're just kids. They're not scary at all. Kind of going along with that, did you choose the parents' roles the way you did on purpose? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Good reading. <laughs> um, yeah, I wanted to switch them up a little bit, um, you know, because it's a book about gender in a lot of ways, and so I wanted her to work and him to stay home, and I wanted her to be the scientist and, and him to be the, the artist, um, and yet I think that only goes so far. When I got really educated with the science of where we're going, yeah. this is all not stuff you made up, right? This no. is stuff that's happening now, and yes. we're changing kids early. Yes. Do you want to talk any more about that? This generation of kids is really the first generation yeah. that 
that is that has this option that is being treated in this way and it's interesting but it's new and they don't quite know how it's going to play out um, and for a lot of kids it is literally a lifesaver. How about the title of the book? Most kids are not transgender but most kids are non-conforming somehow. They somehow don't fit in sometimes and all of their parents want to help them and none of them are certain how to do so and um, and it seems like this very specific particular thing and in fact it's a it's a universal thing. This is how it always is. Yeah. Our Refined Book Club just keeps getting bigger and better, and we want you to be a part of it. To find out how, log on to our website, seattlerefined.com forward slash book club. If you haven't picked up a Refined March Book Club pick yet, what are you waiting for? Trust me, everyone's going to be talking about swimming lessons by Claire Fuller. It tells the story of an unhappy woman who writes a series of letters to her husband about their troubled marriage. But instead of handing them to him, she hides them in his massive book collection, then mysteriously vanishes, leaving him and her two young daughters to wonder what happened. Fans of the book say once you pick it up, you'll be hooked. It, it explodes in the beginning. It has one of the, those beginnings where you just, you, you don't want to start reading this too late at night, or maybe you do because you will be up all night reading this. She just draws you right into the characters, the atmosphere, and you're just there in this book. Loved it. Why? Just loved it. The characters are incredible. I like, I ended up liking all these people as nuts as I think some of them, some of them are, and I think that that's a great skill of an author. You know, it's a great literary read, a mystery that um, is fascinating. The characters are, are vibrant, um, uh, and the story is just riveting. Again, the title of the book is Swimming Lessons by Claire Fuller. And keep your eye on SeattleRefined.com for weekly updates. Cafes are filled with folks engrossed in great reads, but are they drinking Seattle's best lattes? Well, they could be if they check out our website. Refined contributor Rebecca Mongrain has left no stone unturned and no bean unground in her pursuit of the best lattes in the city. If you want to know where they are, log on and search for latte. Well, the search is over for some of Seattle's most amazing fish and chips. It's part of a British invasion on wheels that's winning over customers with a menu that's truly unique. Fish and a rabbit. We're super easy to find. We're all over the place. It's a British invasion of the savory kind when the Nosh truck rolls up. We do sort of uh, British pub fare essentially, so we have a really great uh, hand ground meatloaf sandwich. Uh, we got a roasted bone marrow, uh, do a fried rabbit dish. But our big seller, the main event as it were, is our uh, British style fish and chips. Uh, the Seattle Times came out uh, earlier this year in April and said that we had the best in town, which was, uh, was a real honor. And things kind of exploded after that. It didn't take long for customers to figure out Nosh was much more than just fast food on wheels. Yeah, General yeah, manager it, David Hewitt says Nosh's hands-on approach is what makes the difference. Everything we do, uh, we make everything in-house. We, you know, we make our own mozzarella, we grind our own meat for the meatloaf, we pick our fish up from the dock. And customers just keep coming back for more. Just give me one sec. Two fish, you said to go? We ordered fish and chips, of course, like we always do on Tuesdays. The fish is cooked perfect all the time. I get the Caprese and then I share his fish and chips. It's good quality and their batter is different than most places and it's a huge portion. Well, it's probably the best fish and chips that I've ever had. Light, flaky fish, uh, delicious. Um, all, all the hype is worth it. And don't forget about the chowder. So this is our, uh, this is our wild Alaskan cod chowder, which is uh, made in-house with the fish we pick up from the dock some scallions, and just a drizzle of parsley oil. We're very meticulous. It's, we pay attention to detail, and we think that shows up in our food. A lot of people line up um, to get their fish, so can't, can't, uh, can't deny the line. Do you have a favorite food truck we should check out? Drop us a line at hello at seattlerefined.com and let us know. Seattle Refined is just getting started. See open file. It looks like a game of dress up. But this Western Washington mom is actually teaching her daughter a valuable lesson. But first, Refine discovers a spa off the beaten track. That's well worth the hike.
Welcome back to Refined. All week we've been giving you a VIP look at one of the Northwest's premier getaways. We're talking about Whistler, from hiking to kicking back with a cocktail. This picturesque Canadian mountain town has something for everyone. And as Refined's Kerry Brandenburg discovered, that includes the opportunity to spoil yourself at the spa. This oasis in the wilderness is one of the coolest places I've ever seen. The Scandinav Spa in Whistler is a short hike up a trail, and then you enter a tranquil world with incredible views. We're at Scandinav Spa here in Whistler. Um, it's all based around hydrotherapy. Okay, a spa. So the idea is you start with one of our hot areas to warm your body for about 10 to 15 minutes, and then you go into a cold pool. Only for about 10 seconds. Not everyone's favorite, especially <laughs> on a chilly day with some fresh snow. Yes. Uh, and then finish in a relaxation area. So it's kind of like a caffeine shot, naturally. Yeah, in a that, way. that's a good way to look at it. It's cold out right now, right? And I'm in bare feet, but wow. for some reason my feet are not freezing. That's correct. Well, all of our um, paths are all heated. So you can close to the Yeah, that's a good As you walk nice. around. One thing you can't help but notice when we're here is all the signs that say quiet, silence. You take yes. it very seriously. That is correct, yes. Um, so we are a silent spa. Um, so we don't allow any talking on site at all. So we've got to be an exception this morning because we're here before opening. Right. Yeah, so that we can do a little bit of sneaky talking. <laughs> Luckily, no one was around. I didn't do too well on the silence rule. <laughs> oh, this looks fabulous. The yeah. uh, thermal waterfall in the middle is also a nice one to get the back of the shoulders. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah see, that's my kind of waterfall. This is... Yes. As much as I enjoy oh, the cold, too. yes. So this one here is my new favorite relaxation room. Yeah. Tell um, me why. Beautiful fireplace, just has a calming yeah. effect. But these chairs here particularly, have a seat. We chill out in these ones here. Oh. Put your feet back. And if you look oh, through that's here, nice. there's beautiful windows. You can actually see Whistler Mountain. Oh, yeah. So when the lips are open, you can actually watch the skiers wandering down. And be happy that you're here and not working so hard. Yeah. <laughs> do people take naps? <laughs> they do, yeah. yes. Yeah, we do have some day beds. What about snoring? Have you ever had to wake someone up because they were snoring too loud? Do you know if it's actually happened? Not someone being woken up, but definitely people do snore. Um, I have left my boyfriend in a room and he's fallen asleep and I come back an hour later and the room's empty and he's snoring. So everyone else is obviously <laughs> left. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice of them, though, to let them snore in peace. <laughs> After the relaxation room, the sauna, and the cool baths, there was only one thing left for me to do. Oh, nice. To see more moments from our Refined Whistler adventure, check out our website. Coming up on Refined. Oh, thank you. In a Korean restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> a VIP culinary tour of one of Seattle's most culturally rich neighborhoods. Next. Welcome back to Refined, I'm Gard Swanson. And you know what, I say this all the time, but it bears repeating. We truly live in one of the most amazing cities when it comes to food. You name a type of cuisine, and chances are, you can find it prepared right here with local products. Washington Grown's Val Thomas Matson has a look at some of the hidden gems she found in Seattle's International District. The International District is known for its colorful atmosphere and, of course, the fabulous, authentic Asian cuisine. I met up with Taylor Huang, a local chef and community activist with a nonprofit group that helps ethnic owned businesses in Seattle succeed. Why is it uh, so important to you uh, to really promote um, ethnic? Cuisine. Well, I'm first generation Vietnamese and I see how hard my mother works with very limited resources. I have experienced her own struggle, um, see what she goes through every day, and then finding resources, promoting businesses um, to help sustain what is so vibrant, uh, what is so unique about Seattle, which is our ethnic and immigrant community, which uh, we have a, a very diverse. Talk to me about the diversity of Washington-grown products and how they support you in your work in the community. Um, I'm a restaurateur, and so as much as possible, we like to use locally 
grown produce, and Washington State have um, really grown in terms of food diversity, and um, and I think that reflects the culture and the diversity of the state and, and the city of Seattle. You've picked out some places for us to visit. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> So Val, I'm bringing you to my favorite Hong Kong uh, uh, bakery called the Cake House. And I come here especially for their coconut bun. It's a sweet bun mm -hmm. with a coconut filling in mm -hmm. the middle. Break it open because that's where all the cream is and I take my first bite with the coconut cream in oh, there. Okay. How is mm. it? <laughs> yeah. It's so dreamy. I just want to eat it with my eyes closed. <laughs> Now we're off to the Seoul Tofu House, one of Taylor's favorite Korean restaurants in the neighborhood, where we're having some bibimbap. You have pea vines, you have bean sprout, um, zucchini, uh, carrots, mushroom, and then teriyaki beef. Oh, and then you can great. add your sauce with a, an egg that cooks in the middle. Mm -hmm. Locally grown. Bon appetit. Oh, thank you. In a Korean restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm, the mm. textures. Mm -hmm. And soft, kind of crunchy. Yeah. And our last stop of the day, the market. So we're at Viet Block. You'll find a lot of Asian home goods. Uh, my favorite are the produce, mm -hmm. really fresh produce. Mm -hmm. So for example, here you have yu choy. This one right here mm -hmm. is um, called the opal squash. You can cut these up in place of zucchini. Mm -hmm. Our state is so diverse and it's not just about, you know, the basic, you know, vegetables and produce that we've grown up with, but mm -hmm. our state has really embraced that and grown produce to meet all of that demand. Big Wah not only features a lot of ethnic mm -hmm. food and ethnic mm -hmm. items, but as you can see, they have a lot of different variety of produce and products that we use on a regular basis mm -hmm. every day, like mm -hmm. you see our yellow potatoes here. Right. Really great yellow Washington grown potatoes. Yeah. Um, Vietnamese, we use a lot of these in soup. You can come here and you can buy something that you're familiar with yes. and then also expand your repertoire, right? Exactly. Pick up your limes, your lemon, your potatoes, and, you know, pick up these eggplants. Yeah. Tune in every Wednesday for more special reports from our partners at Washington Grown. It's really interesting stuff. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. You know, we are always looking for inspirational and uplifting stories here on Refine. And as it turns out, we missed a really good one in February for Black History Month. It's about a local mom teaching her daughter about the history of civil rights. And though we might be a few weeks late, we decided there's no bad time to share this one. Here's Como's Gabe Cohen. Pin your hair back. Christy Jones wants her daughter Lola to see something. Face towards me. A lesson through dress up. There we go. Get a twist. Ah. Complete with colorful lipstick. Turn you to the side. Big open smile. And a photo shoot. Up just a little. There we go. Ooh, what? <laughs> now we got to see what we have and compare. What comes out. Do you like it? Is a snapshot into the past. Today, five year old Lola is dressed as Zora Neale Hurston, a black novelist of the early 20th century. This portrait is Lola's 23rd in as many days. From Harriet Tubman to Maya Angelou, a different historical figure for every day of Black History Month. They had the deck stacked against them and were able to overcome all odds and it's just so inspiring. You hope that your kid grows up to do incredible things and having examples for them uh, just kind of guides them. She hopes their courage touches Lola. That's why their photo shoot always ends. Do you know what's special about her? With story time. She wrote books a long time ago, and that's kind of why it's important for us to do these projects too, so that we can help people remember important women like her. Lola is admittedly still shy, but she's eager to show you her favorite portrait. Rosa Parks? Yes, Rosa Parks. And here's why. Because she was brave. Those little lessons mean a lot. What did Dr. Jemison teach you? That you can be anything. And now, she'll be reminded Who is it? to never forget. Is that all, Lola? All right, that'll do it. That's a wrap for today's show. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time right here on Seattle Refined.